his bio is on the WQ website, so you're welcome to check out all of his impressive uh, things that he's done in the past. He's currently the Director of Education for Next Vista for Learning. Did I get that right? Okay, good. So I don't want to take up any more time because he has amazing things to share with you, and thank you for being here, and please welcome Rushton Hurley. Thanks, Mike. Hello, buddy. Hello. All right, I see you were able to find a seat. Excellent, excellent, good stuff. Um, but, you know, with, with this kind of session, with this kind of session, this is so much more about quality than quantity for sure. So, so this, works, this works really well. Uh, now, my name is Rushton, uh, Rushton Hurley, right? And I, uh, I have taught Japanese language. That's kind of been my number one thing. I founded a, a, a nonprofit uh, several years ago in an order to rid the world of ignorance one educational video at a time, right? Uh, and then also, I run a program at the Krauss Center for Innovation called Merit. Uh, all of these things are going to be at the top of a, of a resource page that I give you, so if you're really curious about that, feel free. But thank you very much for taking some time to come in, and hopefully I'll have some good nuggets for you. All right. Uh, as you can tell, my voice is not in its perfect place right now, but uh, that only adds a certain excitement for me. If necessary, I'll, I'll just go into late-night uh, radio mode and just introduce some Marvin Gaye, and we'll, you know, we'll, we'll make this good. Anyway, uh, these, are the two, these are the two URLs you need. Uh, the first one, tinyurl.com slash rhresources, is a large collection of freebies. And the idea with these is that there are all kinds of wonderfully free things that teachers can use to explore, uh, that kids can use to, to try out new, new things in their classes, and we'll talk about why that's important. Uh, but if I just bore you to death, at least you'll have a load of freebies. So feel free to work with that. The other thing, how many of you guys are on internet-connected computers right now? Right now. Okay. Those of you who are, uh, please also open up a tab for todaysmeet.com slash rhq, rh-q. And that way, the insights that different people have over the course uh, of the session can be shared broadly. That, you know, it's much better for the insights to be happening all the way around than just from up here at the front. Okay. Anybody still working on these addresses? Are we good? Just a couple of people? All right. All right. Hurry up. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. While I'm doing that, let me, get, uh, let me get a sense of you guys. How many of you guys are uh, pre-K, K, elementary? All right. All right. How many of you are middle school, high school? Cool. How many of you are college level folks? All right. Uh, anybody else? Anybody else? You know, you're, you're here doing something different entirely. You wandered in. Somebody said, hey, there's a cookie or something. All, right. All good. Okay, okay. Now, experience with video. How many of you right now, you do video projects with your students? Fantastic. All right. Uh, how many of you would like to, but you just haven't kind of figured out how to make that work yet? Okay, good. Uh, I'm going to talk about quite a bit today. I'm going to talk about uh, what we can do in terms of why we would use why we would use video, but also to to get you through how to implement a project with kids, even if you don't know squat about editing video, because I think it's important for teachers to know that even though they may not be video editors, they can still do video projects with their students, and that there are plenty of good reasons to do so. Uh, additionally, we're going to talk about how to get quality in student projects, how the media that, that they create can be mar far better than if we don't, uh, you know, give certain things a shot, you know, ahead of time. Uh, and then I'll talk to you about some contests and perhaps even take some questions and answers if, if that works out. All right. So let's start with power of video. Power of video, for me, uh, really comes down to, to certain things that I think kids need to experience in their educational lives. All right? For one, we need to celebrate creativity. Uh, to illustrate this, I'm going to show you a video that won uh, a recent contest of ours. And it is called Onomatopoeias. All right? So here we go.
If you thought that was a fun video, give these guys a hand. Greg Cox and his, his kiddos, yeah? So you're seeing a couple of different things in a video like this, right? You're seeing kids kind of move out of, of, of the, the particularly passive role that traditionally we've had kids in in, in class. And, and to, to give them the opportunity to be a part of explaining something allows them to experience that topic in ways that they never would if they're just doing the sit and get, right? So, so half the battle is to get them up active and to, to find ways to, to really show, you know, their, their uh, you know, kind of the fun that they can have when they're learning. So that is, that is part of what I think is important when we talk about using digital videos, right? I'm going to show you an, another video here in a minute, and this one has to do with building confidence, right? Because there, there, may, be, there may be nothing more important to a kid uh, in terms of his or her learning than that sense that they're capable, right? Can, am I able to learn this stuff? Can I do it? And so one of the things that happens when we use video is that we have evidence of what they can do. Marco Torres talked about this in his keynote yesterday, evidence, right? Evidence of their, their talents. And I think that, that he was right on with that. And so what I will show you next is, not that one, but one that was a finalist for a recent, uh, a recent contest for us as well. And this one is called, How to Tie Your Shoes. Hello, I'm going to show you how to tie your shoe. So first, you bring your shoelaces into the air, and then you put them like an X, and then you put your finger here, and you bring down the string, and you pull tight. I like to make bunny ears. And then you cross them like this, example of a kid getting involved, right? What, what's your guess as to the age of the kid who made that video? Just a wild guess. Six or seven, yeah. I mean, that, that sounds about right to me, uh, five, six, seven. And, you know, when, when, when you get kids, especially when they're young, making videos, they may be for the first time beginning to get that impression of themselves, that, that, that sense that they are people who can teach as well. When kids stop and say, you know, I can help others learn. They see themselves differently, especially in a school setting. As they get older and they get, they get more and more of a sense of, you know, this is a subject that gives me trouble, I'm no good at, fill in the blank. When, when they can see themselves doing something quite important, then they, then they begin to sense their own capabilities in new ways. And that, that is a precursor, I mean a prerequisite, to making something really happen for them educationally in terms of where they will go uh, over the course of their learning. I'm gonna show you one more video. This video has to do with hidden talents, right? Because what we have done as, t uh, as teachers for so long is ask kids to play a particular kind of educational game. And those who play it really, really well are the ones we reward you know, with a high grade and send on to the best colleges and all that kind of thing. But what we need is to allow kids to bring any kind of talent they bring uh, to the classroom to what we do in our learning as well. So that they get that excitement of saying, hey, I, I, I wanna show you something, I, I want people to see this. So here is a video that if you've ever seen me speak before, and if anybody in this audience has, then you're a masochist for coming back, but still. Nevertheless, this is a video that I just love to show because it shows what kind of talent can be sitting there, right? What you need to know about this video before I show it is that the kid who made the video was making the video not because he was getting paid to make the video. He made this video not because he was getting a grade to make this video. Instead, he made the video because he was a part of a group of people that were in an online community exploring ways to use digital media. And the particular activity was make a video that, that says something about an activity, I mean not activity, an organization that's important to you. So make a video about an organization that's important to you. So his motivation, not money, not grades, just to explore. Here we go.
us. An unforgettable ride. A place to explore. Your talents. Interests. Dreams. Discover. Places you have never seen. Friends you have yet to meet. And skills you never knew you had. Experience. The beauty of nature. The thrill of adventure. The satisfaction of accomplishment. Duty to God. Honor to country. Service to others. Do something with your life. Awesome. Thrilling. Unsurpassable. Fulfilling. Fulfilling. Exhilarating. Scouting. Is. Life. What did you think of that video? Wow. Yeah, I'm thinking it gets a hand for that one. I should say this is not a video that is part of Next Vista's library, but if you want a copy of it, I can get that to you. Just stay in touch with me. The, say it again. Um, I believe 16 or 17, and, and I think he's from Tennessee. But, but the thing about it is that he was, he was just involved in this group that was trying some things out in the summer, right? And so I watch a video like that, and part of it's like, what are we doing indoors? Heavens, let's get outside, you know? You know? Another part of it for me, though, is, is, is a different kind of an almost haunting sense of, wait a minute, watching a video like that, what if that kid is in my class and I don't know it? What if there are kids in my class who have all kinds of wonderful things they're ready to bring to what we do? They're ready to, to show these things you know, as a part of what they've learned. What would that mean to us, right? And what if I'm not allowing it to happen because I'm only teaching one way? Who loses? Well, certainly the kids, but us too, right? If we're in that classroom and we have the chance to see what, what kids can bring to what we do and we're not doing it, we're missing. We're absolutely missing out. So there are other reasons that we do this stuff for nextvista.org, we're trying to gather content. We've got over 700 student and teacher made videos on our site. Five minutes or less, no copyrighted content, nothing that would freak out a third grader, you know what I mean, properly cited, you know, all of these kind of rules that we have. But, but we wanna find creativity out there and have kids say, I made a video to help somebody learn addition and it's on our site. You know, it, it, here it is, it's on this site, you, you can see it. I, I, we sent a link to, you know, Aunt B in North Carolina. Ooh, old school reference. Nevertheless. Right? That's what we want, is we want to have that kind of stuff out there so, so kids can celebrate each other's work. We also want to create a resource for teaching and learning. We think that there are all kinds of, all kinds of people out there who need other ways of presenting content to really connect with the kids in their classrooms. To be able to say, hey, everybody, take a look at this for a minute. See what you think. Right? And then in that process, they, they expand the sense of what's possible in the classroom for the students who are there. And if that keeps the teacher from having to spend a bunch of time creating something that they can just as easily use because it's on our site, wonderful. What we have is free to use, free to contribute to, free to download from. It's just a little attempt to save the world, right? So big, big piece of that for us. Now, we're also working to help students and teachers learn to find copyright-friendly media. Copyright-friendly media, right? It's not copyright, but some rights reserve stuff. One of the flavors of this is called Creative Commons. Uh, I could do a whole session just on what, what that is, but essentially some rights reserved. Totally free for you to use, but you have to cite your source. Tell who did it. There's all kinds of good stuff out there. You can get free music from gemendo.com. You can get free pictures, I mean, all kinds of wonderful, wonderful images for, for media kids can make through search.creativecommons.org. All of this is on that resource page, by the way. So if you, if you go searching on, on that, that resource page for Creative Commons, you'll find the link. Now, in doing this, what we're, what we're trying to do 
is we're trying to set things up so that there is a, a good reason for kids to want to try to do this. And, and let's talk about this from the perspective of how you implement it, right? So we're going to talk about implementation. And I am going to treat you guys as my class. You're my students. A little worried about me, given the way I sound with my voice. But nevertheless, you know, you're there. And I am about to start a digital video project with you guys. And I'm going to introduce it to you, as I would students, right? But in doing so, we'll assume for the moment that I don't know anything about making videos. And some of you are like, oh, you, you, you speak like a crazy man. This is not possible. No, wait, no, wait. It is. It's how you approach it. So, so that lots of little good tidbits coming for you. If you're making, making kind of little, little notes here or there, or you got an old school laptop, you know, the yellow one with the pages that do that, feel free. All good. So the first thing is this. Guys, we're going to do a video project. First of all, it's due in six weeks. Commentary along the way. Give them plenty of time. Give them plenty of time. Right? One of the reasons is you might need to follow with this. I would encourage you to pull out any particular software you're going to use to edit this video and try it out this week to make sure it works because I don't know how to use it and I can't help you. Good luck, go. And people kind of think, oh, you can't, you can't say that. You can't say that. I certainly can't, right? But we'll get there. Now, another thing that you have to add is this. The script. The script is due in two weeks. Our project is due in six. <laughs> six. The, the script is due in two the script is where the bulk of the grade goes. You want to make sure that they are designing a video that addresses the topics you teach in some meaningfully, meaningful way, and let's hope it's correct, right? Don't let them start filming until you've got a good script because they're perfectly capable, all right, of writing a script that has lots and lots of errors in it and creating a video that teaches people wrong, right? They can do it. But if you require them to give you the script before they get started, that'll be a big help. That's where the grade goes. You might say, well, wait, 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 wait. If you're, if you're telling them that the bulk of the grade is in the script, what motivates them to do a good job on the video? Guys, they're motivated. Why are they motivated? Here's the next thing we say. All right, due in six weeks, script is due in two, and everyone will see the videos that are made. This is huge. This is a huge deal. A huge deal because when kids create something that other kids will see, they want it to be good. When they create something just for you, the teacher is the only member of the audience, they want it to be good enough. Good enough is a lame way to go through your education. You know, we see these kids, we, we know what they're capable of doing, and they're just trying to get done. Why? Because you're the only audience and you're a caring adult in their lives and they know it and they know you'll forgive them for being a little lame on that front. They wanted to go off and do something else anyway. But you've changed the game when you've expanded the audience. When you've told them other people are going to see this, now they want it to be good. You might say, okay, well, that's very nice. That's very nice. Yes, they want it to be better. Fine. But we still have a problem. There is an equity issue. Not all of these kids have the, the software, the computers and stuff to be able to do this. How do you deal with that, Mr. Mr. Video Guy? Right. I deal with it this way. So kids, about these video projects, I have to tell you, even though that's what we've called it, the video project, you don't have to do a video if you don't want to. If you would prefer, you can make a poster and present the poster to the class. Now in 12 or 13 years of doing video projects with kids, how many posters have I seen? Zero. Exactly. None. And why is that? Because, and this, and this is it, videos are cool, posters are not, that's it. Right? Kids do not want to be the one that comes up with a poster. Can you imagine that scouting video we just saw? So like some kid makes that in class, everybody's like, oh, that was great, that was awesome, right? You're the next kid? Here's my poster. Right? Not a chance. You will do whatever it takes not to be that kid, right? And in the process of making sure that you're doing something interesting, something that can live online, a video, where kids in other classes could see it, in other parts of the world could see it, you might just want to make it good. And that makes a difference. It makes a big difference. So some of you are like, okay, wait. Okay, fine. All right. So you've covered yourself by offering up this poster. 
Yep, good option. But the problem is that a lot of kids are not very good at technology. Now you see, that's a savvy comment that, that some will make. Because sometimes we, pre we, we pretend that they're, they're all fantastic. Every person that's young is great at technology. They come out of the womb with a password. No, no, right? In fact, those kids who are good at technology are probably in the minority. Those who are not good at technology are embarrassed because they think everybody else is good at it. It's kind of like reading. If they're not good at it, they're good at hiding the fact that they're not good at it. So how do I deal with that in this assignment? This way. On your video project, you may work alone or with one or two other students. Doesn't matter to me. Now that goes a long way to addressing that. The kids who don't know how to make a video are excited to learn how, and they can learn it from somebody else who knows how, right? And they can learn along the way. You can take kids who don't know squat about video, they could go, they could go to YouTube, do iMovie tutorial, find videos that'll teach them how. Windows Live Movie Maker tutorial, find videos that'll teach them how. All kinds of stuff is out there to, to, you know, that'll help them learn this stuff. So you might say, wait a minute, that, that means that the grade is going, you know, like you have one kid do all the work. I mean, that's, a, well, first of all, this is not like, 50% of their entire grade, certainly not. 5%, 10%, maybe, right? But what it is, is the piece of work that the kids will remember later on. Recently, I was at a, at a fundraising thing up in the Bay Area, and a guy walked up to me, right? He said, Mr. Hurley, how are you? Fortunately, we all had name tags on. I'm like, Sherman, I'm great, right? I knew him right when I saw him, but I just, like the name, you know, I mean, I'm like that. And we got to talking. He's like, how you been? I was, you know, it was great talking to him. But a couple of minutes into the conversation, he said this. He said, Mr. Early, I want you to know those digital video projects we did in Japanese, that was my favorite part of high school. That was something to hear. I would have never guessed it, right? I knew the kids liked the projects. They loved doing them but I would have never stuck a superlative on it. The favorite part of high school? Maybe it has something to do with the opportunity to be creative in that, in that way, to craft something different than they've been after, asked to craft stuff before. Maybe there's something about that that just appeals right down in the heart. But for this guy, bam, he graduated in like 2001 or something, you know I mean? Back in geologic age ago in terms of, you know, what, what, what's available in terms of, you know, media production. So it's something, it's something to see. Now I would also encourage you, another rule here, to give time limits. Class, about these video projects, 45 seconds max. Now they will complain, especially if you've got middle schoolers or high schoolers. They're tweens or teens, it's their job to complain, I'd worry if they didn't, right? Oh, Mr. Hurley, that's too short, oh, no, no, no. You know, like, and then they go off and they make great videos. Right? But the time limits are important. The time limits are important because it gets them to zero in on the stuff they need to do. How do we fit this in? How do we make this work? How do we show what we know? How do we get it in just right? That process of crafting produces, the, in part, produces the quality that we want. There's another reason. Teachers, you know what I'm talking about. It's this. If you assign a video project, you are honor bound to watch what comes in. And a kid can make, like a 13 year old boy, tasked with a video uh, on photosynthesis, can create a 15 minute kung fu movie out of it with a lot of action scenes. And it's brutal to watch. You'll get three minutes into that when you're like looking around for something sharp to like thrust into your skull, right? Make them short for your own protection. Now, now, I understand this, right? Some teachers won't do something like this because they want to avoid this particular moment. The day it's due. Some kid walking in. Mr. Harley, I was working on the video project last night on my computer and, and something just went wrong. and It was a te technology problem. I'm, I'm sorry. Doc, nothing I can do about it. Sorry. What an annoying situation to have to deal with. That, that, that's brutal. I agree. But think back to your rules. You're prepared. Hey, wow, that's terrible. Where's your poster? <laughs> All right, you know, so, so you're ready to go. You're ready to go. 
You use the right rules, set things up in the right way. You can, you can handle that some kids don't, don't have a lot of skills on this front. You can handle that some kids don't know much you know, about you know, what it means to, to script something because they can work with others. There's, there's all kinds of possibilities, right? But you set it up well and it'll work. I sometimes describe it this way. In order to get going, you need this. Get your ideas, get a script, get feedback on these ideas and your script, and then get going with your, with your, with your film. Now, I want to highlight one particular piece of this real quick. Getting feedback. As a part of these projects I have be, uh, that we do for our site, I have gotten into the habit of Skyping in to visit with classes, right? So a teacher will contact me and say, hey, could you, could you talk to my students? So sure, you know, as long as we can get a Skype connection through, it works for me. Happy to do this. So I connect with those kids and I talk to them about what it means to create a video that other people can learn from. Hundreds, maybe thousands of people will see the video you make and it, it could help somebody in a big way. Make it good. And there's one big sentence that you just got to keep right there in your mind. It's what we shoot for all the time as teachers. But there's something about this particular kind of project that pushes it in a particularly powerful direction. And it's this. This question. How can I make it better? Not am I done yet. But how can I make it better? And if kids are asking that, okay, this is what I've got so far. How can I make it better? Here's my script. How can I make it better? Here's my rough draft of my video. How can I make it better? And you teach them. People will give you feedback. You smile and say thank you. You can take that and make it better, or you can ignore what they said. It's up to you, right? But you want to gather ideas. Because somebody will say something that makes you go, wow, yeah, let's do that. Cool. All right. Now, if this is our question, if this is our question, then we really come down to the, the larger issue of how, how this becomes a meaningful educational experience for them. And it has to do with the quality of their work. When I first started doing these projects with my high school students in Eastside San Jose uh, in 99 or 2000 or whatever it was, the first thing I noticed when we started watching these videos together was this. The quality of their work had gone through the roof. As a language teacher, I'd had them do skits before. Guys, we've been studying this. Let's do some skits. You know, they're, they're like, it'll be over soon. Right. But, you know, occasionally they do well. Some kid was trying to impress a girl on the other side, you know, whatever. Right. But but by and large, they were kind of lame. And then we started doing these videos and suddenly, suddenly the quality was like. Phew. I remember these two guys in terms of their grades, bottom of the food chain in that class. But it was Japanese four. Right. You can't totally slack your way into Japanese four. Hello. Right. But. Still, compared to the other kids in the room, in terms of the grades, they were down. And you know, there's something about that grading scheme that we use, that we use, that we use, right? That, that starts making the kids think of themselves the same way. And those kids whose grades aren't so hot, they start thinking of themselves, at least in the context of that class, as being the low end. And then we did this project and those two boys made a video. And that video was one of the coolest videos I'd ever seen. And the kids were so excited about it. Yeah, that was great. That was cool. Woo! Right? It was like they had the chance to say to the rest of the room, we belong here too. They need those opportunities. Through doing something other than just the written test. Right? They need those opportunities. And you know, it was a consistent thing. With the video projects we did... It seemed like after every video, people were doing that same thing. That was great. That was cool. And how many of those kids go home and no one at home ever says to them, that was great. That was cool. And yet we've got the opportunity to do certain kinds of projects with these kids that will bring that out, bring that willingness to celebrate each other's work out in them. We may be morally bound to do this kind of thing. I hope so. All right. Now, how we encourage quality. Let's talk about it. First, they need to see other videos. They need to see other videos, right? 
They shouldn't make a video before they've had a chance to watch a bunch of videos. I'm going to show you one of the, video, one of the uh, collections on our site real quick. So this, this is uh, Next Vista for Learning right here, right? Eee, lots of stuff right here. Here it is. That's me. All right, now, towards the bottom and on the left, we have plenty of careers videos. You click there, and we've got 109 of them at the moment. They show five at a time, right? But if you, if you start going through these, you say, okay, well, you know, what's next? How, how, many different, how many different videos can we see? You assign the kids to pick any three that they want. And maybe they choose ROV pilot. There's a guy whose job it is at the Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute to like pilot underwater vehicles for, for scientific research. How cool is that, right? There, there are videos about people who do gaming professionally in order to test the upper limits of computer equipment. Is a job for that? Yes. We want them to see new possibilities in themselves. But more to the point, having a wide variety of videos to watch not only allows them to see some, some kind of avenues for their future, but it also means that they get to see what kind of works well and what doesn't. They will be incredibly critical of what they see. Knowing that, that the kids who made them aren't anywhere near, they'll be really critical. They're good at it, right? And you ask them these questions. What are the strengths of the video you watched? What are the weaknesses of the, the, of the video you watched? How would you approach making that same video differently if it were you? I do this like with Google Forms, right? You know, just create a very simple form with these three things in it. So, so you know, your name, name of the video you watched, you know, maybe you rate it, right? On a one to seven, how compelling was this video for you? Seven meaning I'd love to do this job. One was like, ah, I'm not into it at all. And then I ask those three questions. What are the strengths? What are the weaknesses? How would you do it differently? And they come back with all kinds of great stuff. They really do. And then you get them to talk together about it. Little groups. Which video did you watch? Well, I watched DJ. Oh, really? You know, what'd you learn about being a DJ? They'll talk about the job, but they'll also talk about the quality of the video. Well, I watched this one video, and it was just a guy standing up against a wall talking about his career. It was kind of boring. Right. Don't do that. Right? Well, there was this one about an EMT paramedic, right? But he's, and he's standing next to this van. And it's kind of a cool setting, but the road is right there, and, the, and you know, there are cars going back and forth. It's kind of hard to hear them at times. Right. Don't do that. Right? Actually seeing it makes a big difference. It makes a big difference for them in terms of having it in their head so they don't repeat the same mistake. But, but once they've had that out in their groups, shared out, you know, one thing we learned not to do was this. One thing we learned to do was, was this. We saw a really cool technique in this one video on, on this or that or the other, right? The career set, I think, partic is particularly good for this because there's such a wide range of videos on there. We're proud to say we've, we've got several videos in Spanish on that one as well. We want more. We want more in other languages. The more, the better. All right. Now, in terms of just using video in class, there's another question that I would, I would encourage you to add. How would we validate the information presented in the video? How would we validate the information presented in the video? You've got a generic lesson plan for videos right now, right? Essentially, Kids choose a video, they watch it, make a few notes. And then you can give them, you know, a little, little how to deal with the mountains of information, you know, we're, we're climbing all the time now. Where would we go to find out if, if this is correct? And get them, get them into a habit of figuring out what it is that they see that they need to kind of go searching and what, you know, is just, you know, part of the filler for that. All right. Now, contests. We have contests. Now, there are a lot of contests out there. I think, I think video contests in general tend to be pretty cool in terms of what they, you know, what they get out of kids, right? But let me tell you about ours. At, at nextvista.org, we have these contests, and typically it comes down to this one thing, right? Creatively explain something that one might encounter in school in 90 seconds or less, right? And we get some really good videos, really good videos that come out of this. I like seeing what the kids do, right? I like seeing how they approach different topics that we teach. When we have these contests, though, 
It's like they get to represent their school in, in a way that maybe they, they haven't felt they could before. Sometimes the creativity is, is a bit off the scale. Uh, for example, a year ago in our spring contest, we had a video called How to Be Sneaky. Now, I'm not sure where in school you get sneaky lessons, right? Or at least in the classrooms. But, but it's a funny video, right? These two girls, you know, like, dress in dark colors. You know, move against the wall, right? Make sure you've eaten something so you, your stomach doesn't grumble. I'm like, you gotta be kidding. This is crazy. But it's a fun video. So we didn't know where to put it, so we created a new category. Creativity and inspiration. That's a good category. It sounds a lot better than we had no idea than, you know, what to do with this video. Had another one, you know, that same contest. This was the title, this was the title of the video, I kid you not. How to make an oxyacetylene, no, sorry, how to make a sword with an oxyacetylene torch and a grinder. Right? Here's this kid out on his driveway. It's in Alaska, right? So he's got like mountains of snow, you know, next to the driveway. And he's, and he's got this big piece of metal and he pulls out a thing. And, you know, it's like, good heavens, right? I showed this to my buddy Todd, who, who helps me with Next Vista stuff. And he, he watched it and then he looked at me and said, other than reporting this kid to the FBI, what should we do with this one, right? There is so much fun stuff that comes out of these contests. So how do, we, how do we go about it? Let's do this. First of all, the time limit, 90 seconds. There's actually another 60 seconds that a student can take in order to, to do the credits because you've got to properly cite your sources. So, so the video explaining something can be up to 90 seconds and then you can take up to another 60 seconds for the credits. Speaking of citations, credits, we are very, very specific about which sites you can get your media from. So if you're using music, you can either create it yourself, take it from gemendo.com, which is all Creative Commons licensed. By the way, warning, the stuff there is not all family friendly, right? You, you start looking at that site, you're all impressed, you're like, wow, this is fantastic. There's thousands of songs, yes. And I can take this legally, yes. Wow. Do you, have I heard of any of these bands? Uh, no. All right. But, but, that's the way this one works. You can put the video, you can put the music up there, right, and just tell the world, take it, totally free, share it, but tell people where you got it. There's another site we use called incompetech.com. Now, for those of you who have some, have some savvy with, with uh, copyright issues, you might look at that site and go, wait a minute. Incompetech is royalty free. That's different. And yes, it is. A lot, of, a lot of teachers don't understand this, right? But it's an important one to understand. Any of you guys like freeplaymusic.com? Right? Isn't that a cool site? I was like, wow, this is fantastic. This is great. You know, we're going to use this in all kinds of projects. Two years into using that site, one of my kids came up to me. Mr. Hurley, have you read the fine print? <laughs> uh, No. We can't use any of this. I'm like, what? You gotta be kidding me. No. That's when I learned the difference between free and royalty free. Royalty free means you buy it, but you don't have to cite it. Free means it's free and you should cite it. I'm good with that. I'm absolutely good with taking something for free and telling exactly where I got it. But I don't have the kind of budget to buy a bunch of royalty free music. I mean, there are some good things out there, you know, I mean, there, there are good companies that produce royalty free music for a school environment. Sounds Abound is a really cool, uh, really cool company for that kind of thing. Royalty free. But you got to know what you're dealing with. So for us, the music has to come from either gemendo.com, incompetech.com. Oh, by the way, yes, it's royalty free, but the guy, guy who does it, all right, Kevin McLeod, he gave us permission to use what he's created on that site for our contests. That's why we can use that, right? Go Kevin, that's awesome. Do we have any other options? Yes, you can make it yourself. Kids actually enjoy this a lot. They're all standing around. They just record it. Hey, you guys made that? That's cool. Kids live for somebody else looking at them going, that's cool. We do too. We often do not spend enough time on the pedagogical importance of cool. It's a motivator. 
It's what, it's what makes us think about what we do in different ways. And it's particularly powerful for kids. Now, there's a lot of different opinions about how to cite a source for something like this. For me, it comes down to this. The name of the person who created slash composed slash uploaded the piece of media, the name of the work, and the site from which you got it. I distinguish that from the URL. Now, if you've got, in, in whatever you've created, if you've got space to put the URL in, that's fine, right? But sometimes people are like, no, that's what you need. That's the only thing. Wait. Streamed video online, the videos are often like here. You can't read it, especially if there's a lot of other little things out there. If you can't read the URL, that's not quite the point, is it? What we want to do is draw attention to the people who are responsible for creating this particular cool piece of music or image or whatever it is. That's what's important. If you look on the, research, the resources page, I'll show it to you real quick. This is, that, this is the resources page right here. Look, there's loads here. Wee, check it out. All kinds of stuff. There's a particular link called Citing Sources. Quick tidbit, quick tech tidbit for you guys. 90% of the people who search on a big page like this kind of go old school and do it this way. I know it's here somewhere. It's got to be here somewhere, right? That's not what you do. You do search on page. Control F on a Windows machine. Command F on an a Apple. And you do search on page. See, it's right up here, citing, citing sources. There it is, under images and slideshows, citing sources, the easy way. If you click on that, you're going to see a two-page PDF that I created that is my gift to you. How to go through all kinds of processes of grabbing copyright-friendly media and saving them on your machine with the citation information in the file name. Why do people not cite their sources? Typically because it's a hassle, right? Oh, I couldn't find it again, so I just blew it off. Right. That's not good, but I understand. But when you, when you download it, if you, get the, if you get the citation information in the file name, you're good. Feel free to take that, share it with colleagues, share it with students, whatever you want. So, last piece of this, or last two pieces. Release forms. We have release forms on our site. When you go to one of our contest pages, it tells all about it, right? Yeah. If you don't have this covered already in, your, in your, your school's release forms that go out with a packet at the beginning of the year, you're free to use ours. We do not require people to send stuff to us, right? But when we get a video submitted by a kid, there also has to be a teacher verification form, which is done online. And so the teacher says, okay, you know, this kid made this video, I have reviewed it, and they assure us of a number of things. There are no errors, you know, factually, uh, you know, there, it's follow the rules, blah, blah, blah. And one of the things is I have release forms for anyone identifiable in the video. So identifiable means a number of things. Obviously, if, if you can see a kid's face, a kid's identifiable. But a lot of kids think that when they make a video, they need to be in front of the camera. They don't have to be. Some of the best videos we get, you don't, you don't get to see the person narrating at all. Right? Because you're seeing stuff more related to the content than someone explaining the content. There's a difference. It's a Zen expression. Don't mistake your finger for the moon. If you're pointing at the moon, what's important is, is the moon, not what you're using to point there. Sometimes in school we talk about, you know, you know, we talk about instruction. What's important is certainly instruction, but only in service to learning. Learning is what counts. So at any rate, that's how we deal with releases. If, if anyone is identifiable in that video, get a release form. You've got stuff from us. Just let us know you got it. That's good enough. Uh, yes, go ahead. Are, are students identifiable by their voice? Are students identifiable by their voice? Uh, not unless they give their names. Hi, I am, you know, Mike, you know, Jimenez, and I'm blah, 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 blah. All right, then they're identifiable at that point. So I would, I would say yes at that point. Good question. Now, we also require the files, the video files we get to be of one of five formats. They're the most common ones, right? MOV, MP4, M4V, the common Apple ones. WMV and AVI, common Windows ones, right? So those are the formats we'll take. And they have to be 40 megs or less in size, Right. So, and we, we've actually put up a couple of videos on how to how to figure out how big your file is if you don't know how to do that. Okay. Now, you said 
No, no, they are available online. Right. So this, this is what, uh, this is what like, one of our contests looks like. So let me go back to nextvisit.org. Where is it? There we go right there. And here we go. And so like this, this contest right here is the, the current one, the spring shoots. So I click on that. And what you're going to see on the side is I mean, there's a lot of information that kids have to go through, right? So we have uh, contest hints. We have the instructions. If you click on the instructions, you know, you'll see like where the release forms are and things like that. But over here on the right, the student entry form and the teacher verification form. See, that's how you get there. Thank you. Thank you for asking about that, actually. All right. We have different strands for our contests. Now, I've been talking about student-created videos, but that's not the only kind we do. Some of the coolest videos we get are made by teachers who say, you know, I've got a totally cool way of looking at this. Kids love it. Great. The kids who are assigned to your room are the lucky ones who benefit. Let's share that love a little, little more broadly, right? Let's get that video out there so other people can, can benefit from it as well. So we have student-created videos. That's one strand of our contest. Teacher-created videos, that's another one. And we've just started with a third strand, collaboration. It's when a teacher helps kids make videos. Because before, we just considered teacher-only videos, and pretty much students was anything that students were involved with. But the, <laughs> it turns out the teenagers are having a hard time competing with the elementary kids. Because the elementary kids have got a teacher helping them, you know, kind of more directly, and elementary kids have the advantage of being cute, you know, all of this kind of thing, right? Uh, but, but we think, you know, by adding this, this collaboration strand, we're doing good on that. We give prizes and awards. We give iTunes cards. We make these nice certificates and send them to you. What we do is we pick a set of finalists. You know, we have a scoring system that's on the site. Uh, and, and then we'll take the finalists, and somewhere where I'm speaking... I'll show the, those finalist videos to an audience. They'll have clickers, and they'll choose the winner. It's a fun thing for the audience to do. Kids enjoy it as well. We did the same thing in order to pick our uh, videos of the year, which are, which are on the moment, at the moment on the front page of our website. All right. Now, the current stuff. On the left, you see uh, the little logo for our spring shoots. Get it? Shoot a video, spring shoots. Anyway. Uh, the idea with this one, just as I said before, 90 seconds or less, creatively explain something one might encounter in school. It can be a concept for kindergartners, how to tie your shoe. It can be the foil method for multiplying binomials. It can be, uh, you know, ways of talking about, uh, you know, high-end economics issues. It doesn't matter. We'll take, we'll take anything that we think can help someone learn, right, as long as it meets our rules for accuracy and copyrighted content, stuff like that. The one on the right, that is connecting through video. Connecting through video is about service. Uh, the three big collections at nextvista.org are light bulbs, which are about academic topics, as in a kid watches it and, whoop, you know, ah, I got it, right? They can walk back into the classroom, you know, feeling like they know what's going on. That's where our careers video, uh, videos are as well. The second category, second collection, is called Global Views. Kids introducing different parts of the planet to their peers, right? This is our community. This is our school. This is what we learn in school. This is what we do on the weekend. This is what's important to us. This is what we hope for the future. And then we've got a collection called Seeing Service. And it's the smallest collection we have. And we want, we want that to change. We want more and more videos there. Videos about people who volunteer their time and energy and resources to help others and why, and why they do it. For a lot of kids, community service is simply a high school graduation requirement. But it shouldn't be that way. They need to discover that wherever they are on that grading scale, right, they have something to give. They need to discover that even if they are having trouble passing their Algebra I class, that there's something incredibly meaningful about spending a little time in an elderly care facility reading to the little old lady whose family doesn't get around you know, to visit her often enough. These activities help them see themselves in new ways. And this particular project is one I hope you'll get involved with because we want more and more videos about people who just do give of their heart. And if you're interested in that, stay in touch with me. Uh, my, my contact info is coming up. Right now, as it turns out. 
So this is, this is my email address, rh at nextvista.org. On Twitter, I'm at Rushton H. My friends who, who tweet laugh because they're like, eh, he doesn't tweet very much. Sorry. All right. Uh, nextvista.org slash newsletter. I would love for everyone in this room who is not, actually, how many of you are already on my newsletter? Oh, wow. A bunch, several of you. Weepy moment. All right. Cool. All right. But uh, if you're not, I send out word about once a month, new videos that are on our site, free resources that are run across, right? And other things that I think might be of interest to about seven, 8,000 teachers around the world. So please sign up. And there's a little section for comments. I would ask you in the comment section to tell me how I can make this presentation better. Your evaluation can help me improve. I do not believe that I am God's gift of teaching or anything like that. I can get better. How can I make this better? And you can tell me. Hey, when you did this, it was, you know, that, that really worked well for me. Hey, when you did this, I, I don't know. You know. Have you ever thought about adding, you know, kind of a comment about these things? You know, have you heard this story? There's, there's all kinds of things that can make, make what this is better. I believe that these kinds of projects reach out from Next Vista and other organizations like it to you guys as teachers and through you to the hearts of kids who may not know what they're capable of educationally. And so I really want to see something special happen. I want to make sure I do the best possible job of inspiring people to whatever degree I'm capable to say, yeah, I want to do that. Kids, we're going to try something new. Those are good moments. They're good moments. Now, the next one, tinyurl.com slash rhresources is what I was telling you about. That's, that's the resource page. You go about halfway down, there's like a horizontal rule, and then there's stuff that's just pretty much all digital media, right? Cut loose. If you want to do digital media projects, you do not have to spend money on editing software. If you get good at it, you may want to eventually. Great, right? But just starting out, use the free stuff. The free stuff is fine. In our contests, it's not about, about high-end video production. It's about creativity and clarity of explanation. That's what counts to us. Give it a shot. And then www.nextvista.org. I encourage you to go there right now. Take a look. See what kind of videos we've got there. See what in those videos might inspire your kids to stop and say, hey, I think we can make one like that, but better. Good. Good. There's a lot... I think that we can share via what they can do creatively. Okay, so I also ask that you go to uh, 2012.q.org and put in an evaluation of this, setting, of this session. Uh, I hope that uh, you will give them the kind of feedback that allows them to make the conference better because in the evaluations, that's essentially what they are asking you. How can we make it better? How can we make the conference better? Tell them what you think. They listen. This is a good conference. All right, be part of it. So with that, uh, we've got a few minutes. If you have other questions, I would be happy to address them. Go, what you got? Start us off. That, that no, uh, okay, good question. Now, first of all, that video is not uh, a, part of, a part of our site. I use that as a way of illustrating what's possible in the video. However, on the resource page, uh, right over here and back to there. If you scroll down a bit, just like right up to the top here, videos and other digital media I share with you, right? So you get down, you'll see these, right? So you got the scouting one. Uh, and, and there's a lot in these videos that I think are inspiring for teachers and students. But you can download it there if you want. You can right click, save link as, you know, all good. So, so feel free. That scouting video, it, I want to say it's, it's about two and a half minutes. I'm not sure of that. But uh, I just love watching it. I think I learned something new about making videos every time I see it. And I was a Boy Scout. So there you go. All right. Yeah. All right. Another question right back here. I just want to say, uh, this lady right here is offering a session tomorrow on step-by-step -step instructions on how to start new videos. Oh, cool. Right. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
I am going to, uh, sorry, the question was, uh, I have heard that you can use up to 30 seconds of a piece of music for free. Um, I have heard copyright lawyers say that, that impressions about the amount of stuff you can use uh, that's copyrighted is, is kind of uh, overplayed, that there are too many other things in, you know, kind of in, in, in the mix, too many other variables. I would, I would refer you to this. In that same area of, of the page where I had the citing sources down here, right, uh, there is also this, Code of Best Practices and Fair Use. This is from the Center for Social Media in, uh, at, at American University. If you're really interested in copyright stuff, that, that's a good place to go. Uh, I, you know, so many different, different opinions about what you can and can't do. So many. So, you know, it, it, it's, it's worth exploring. Uh, I won't speak to that specifically. I have heard it, and I have heard people say, you know, actually, you know, a bit of a myth, this and this and this. But I, but I, don't, know, I don't know the exact parameters on that. Th thank you, though, for asking, because it, it's, it's an important one. We don't tend, as teachers, to know as much as, as we should about these issues. Um, you know, I mean, a lot of teachers think, you know, hey, well, under fair use, I'm covered left and right, right? I can show Aladdin in class. Truth is, you can, if it's for an educational purpose. If you're talking about the way uh, people from the Middle East are portrayed in popular media, yes, you can show Aladdin in class. But if the kids have just been good, you know, okay, we'll watch a movie. No, that's not educational, that's, that's entertainment. So there's a lot of different things out there. But that, that Center for Social Media uh, site is fantastic for that. Cool. Question over here. Okay. Yep. And I'm like, sitting here bummed because I can't use it for your contest. Um, if, if a school district has purchased a library and it is free, royalty free, et cetera, because we, and we have software where we can um, make it whatever length we want it to be, yeah. it's really a powerful tool. And yep. all, all of us media design teachers are jazzed about it because it's brand new, but can we use it? Uh, the, the problem for nextvista.org becomes policing it. You know, what we don't want is kind of an out for, for people saying, oh, yeah, yeah, we have permission to use this, right? Because for every one Palm, you know, Palm Springs Unified, Palm Springs Unified, for every one Palm Springs Unified that's doing it right, there's going to be, you know, like five people that are like, oh, you know, we, we got permission for this, you know, and it's like, right? So, you know, it's not hard, you know, especially with Gemendo.com. There's so much music there. There's so much music. You can find the stuff that, and kids learning how to like, you know, kind of move stuff in and out is, is helpful. Yeah, it's, it's kind of a limitation on our part in terms of what, what we're capable to do with, with our one and a half person organization, <laughs> right? Guys, if you have other questions, feel free to come on up and ask, but thank you so much for spending you know, your lunch period with me. Have an amazing conference and go forth and inspire those kids with some great projects. Take care.